Let's visit piecewise functions in lesson five. A piecewise function has different rules for different parts of the domain. We will explore functions that pair every number in an interval with a single value. That's called a step function. One such step function has a symbol that looks like this. It's called the greatest integer function where the greatest integer represents the greatest integer that's less than or equal to the value of x. The format for writing piecewise functions is shown here below. We're going to use a formula, and the domain for formula 1 would be this piece. Then the second piece would be another formula or equation, and this would tell you the domain. So let's take a look at this one. If we want to graph 1 half x plus 3, for x greater than or for x less than or equal to 2, then I could graph starting at the y-intercept value of 3 and have the rise of 1 and the run of 2. Now it said greater than or equal to, so I want to stop at that point where x is 2. And then we would go back to the y-intercept and follow that pattern in down 1 and left 2, so we would have this piece of the function right here. That's for this part. Then for the next part, x minus 4 quantity squared minus 3, that tells me that the vertex is located at 4, negative 3. So if we come over here to 4, negative 3, that's my vertex, and the parabola steps up 1, to the right and left, and then the next step is 3 up and 1 to the right or left. So if we step up from this point here, 1, 2, 3, and over 1, that would be an open circle. So this is our parabola for that second piece. Now, one thing I like to do is I like to have my students shade where the domain changes. So this side over here, we can tell by looking, this piece here has everything in the green shaded area. And then we'll use yellow for this piece. And this is yellow to the right. So you can shade your grid before you start to clearly define where your domain stops and starts. And if you look carefully at our graph, we have a closed circle here because x was less than or equal to 2. And we have an open circle here because all the x values had to be greater than 2, but not including 2. In example, two, in example 1, we're going to see that the graph of the absolute value function is probably our most famous piecewise graph. For the first part of the formula, y equals x if x is greater than or equal to 0. So I'm going to start at 0 at the origin and close up my circle and draw the graph y equals x to the right for all positive values of x. But on the second piece, y is opposite of x or negative x, so this point here would have been an open circle, open circle here, but the top one was a closed circle at zero, so it closes up the function and causes it to be a continuous function, but it is a piecewise function with two pieces. In example two, I want you to notice that the domain changes at positive two. So you can see I've shaded to the right of positive two in green and to the left of positive two in yellow. So to the left, we want to show the graph negative two x plus three. So let's sketch that negative 2x plus 3 has a slope of negative 2, which is down 2 and right 1. But when we get down here to x equals 2, that's going to be an open circle there. So our graph to the left goes off in this direction. In the right, we have x minus 1. So if you think about x minus 1 when x is 2, then 2 minus 1 is going to give us 1. So our ordered pair, the f of 2, is equal to 1. That's where we're going to start our graph. It'll be a closed point there. And the slope is 1, so it goes off to the right like such. So in this case, 
we have a jump discontinuity. The graph is broken when x is 2. For example 3 and 4, we need to be able to evaluate a piecewise function based on which point in the domain is our x value. So I'll do example 3 and you can do example 4. In example 3 it says the f of 8. We want the y value at 8. So 8 lives in this third formula, 1 half x plus 2. So we would substitute 8 into 1 half of our x value 8 plus 2. So half of 8 is 4 and 4 plus 2 is 6. So the f of 8 is 6. So 8, 6 is our ordered pair on the graph. The f of 0 in the second piece would be in this middle part of the domain. So 0 lives in this domain. So when x is 0, y is 1 consistently there. So the f of 0 is 1. And in the third part, we want negative 5. So that would be our first equation. Negative x minus 3 is 5 minus 3. So the f of negative 5 is going to be positive 2. So turn off your camera and try example 4 and then come back to check your work with mine. For part A, I got negative 10. For part B, positive 3. And for part C, I also have positive 3. Let's look now at graphing step functions and what it means to evaluate the greatest integer function. So when you see the greatest integer of 2.3, you think about stepping back to the integer that's not greater than 2.3. So in, in your mind, if you visualize the number line, you want to find the integer not greater than 2.3, so that would be 2. In example B, the integer not greater than 3.4 is 3. The integer not greater than 0.57 is 0. The integer not greater than 7 and 9 tenths is 7. And be careful now, the integer not greater than negative 4.6 when you step down is negative 5. And the same thing for negative 0.85 and negative 2.4, 9.7 is 9, and here negative 2. So the greatest integer function is the integer not greater than the value in the special brackets. In example 6, we're actually going to graph the greatest integer function and take a look at that. If this is new to you, one way to visualize what's going on is you can make yourself a table. So the integer not greater than 0 is 0. That means I've got a closed up circle here. But if you go to the right, the integer not greater than a half is still 0. And the integer not greater than 9 tenths is still 0. But the integer not greater than 1 is going to be 1. So we're going to step up to 1. This would be closed up to 1, and then it steps up. And if you follow that logic and thinking, at the next integer, you're stepping up and having a closed circle on the step up and an open circle to the right. So you can reproduce that graph in both directions. In part 7, we want to be able to go backwards now and look at an equation from the graph and write the piecewise function representing the graph. So in this example, we have two different parts. Those are going to be our subdomains. And if I shade, you can tell that the change in the domain changes at negative 2. So we have one piece that's less than negative 2 or equal to negative 2, and we have the second piece, which is greater than negative 2. And our job is to write the equation based on the graphs that are given to us. And then to show those as two separate pieces 
It's two different parts for our piecewise function. Those two parts are called the subdomain. If we labeled these graphs piece one and piece two, then the first equation has a y-intercept that you can't tell, but if you went two up and one right, two up and one right, you could continue that graph to see that the slope is two and the y-intercept should be positive five. So we could get rid of that piece here and name the domain as x less than or equal to negative two since it's closed up at negative two. And then for the remaining piece, um, we have a slope of a half and the y-intercept is four, so that equation is gonna be one half x plus four and that domain would be for x greater than negative two. Now you may wanna turn off the video and try example eight on your own and come back and check your work with my work. I see three separate parts. So if we shade our domain with yellow up to positive two, we're focusing on that parabola, green between positive two and positive five, and then blue for everything greater than positive five, we have piece three. So we can name these as equation one, equation two, and equation three in our three pieces. So for the first one, that's a parabola that is shifted three units down. So this is y equals x squared minus three, and the domain is from negative infinity up to positive two, but it doesn't include positive two. So our domain is x less than two. The second equation is a constant function at y equals three, and the domain begins at positive two, so two is less than or equal to x, but it's less than five. And then the third piece is going to be, again, we need to backtrack that equation. So I see the slope is negative one. If you start here at positive seven and you backtrack, it's, the slope is negative one. So if we continued that pattern back to the y-axis, stepping up one and left one, then the y-intercept would occur at positive seven. And the function is including positive five, so x is greater than or equal to positive five. And that is our build your own piecewise function. We are finished with lesson 2.5 on piecewise.